conditional probability. Conditional probability means that given that something has occurred, what is the probability of occurrence of another event? Suppose I pick up a card from the deck of cards. Okay. If I ask you, what is the probability that it's it's a heart? You can't see the card. I'm asking you, what is the probability it's a heart? How many cards are there in a deck? 52 of them. How many of them are heart? 13 of them. So what's the probability? 13 out of 52. That is 1 out of 4. But let me tell you something. You know, the card that in that is there in my hand, it's a red colored card. Now I ask you, what is the probability that it is head? Will your answer still be 1 upon 4? No, it will change now. Why? Because your sample size has shrunk. You know that in a deck of cards, there are exactly 26 red cards, out of which 13 are hearts. So your answer will no more be 13 out of 52, but it will be 13 out of 26 or half. So given that, given that in my hand it's a red card, the probability of it being heart is half. Instead, if I said that, no, it's not a red card, it's a black card, then what's the probability of it being a heart? Zero, because there are no black hearts in, in the deck of cards. Okay, so that is what conditional probability is all about. Given that an occur event has occurred, what is the probability that an event, another event would occur? Given that Trump has been elected, what is the probability that a certain economic policy would be implemented? Or given that Hillary has been e elected, what is the probability that a certain economic policy is implemented? The both answer to both the questions would be different. Okay. So, what is the formula for this? So, this is over here. Probability, the way to write is probability A given. This line means given B. Probability that my card is heart given that it's red is 13 upon 26 or half. Instead, probability my card is heart given that it's black is 0 upon 26 or 0. So, this is what, what it meant, what it is, what is meant by this vertical line. It, it is said as given that. And what is the formula for that? So, there's a formula which we will go through and try to understand how it works. This is the formula. Probability of A given B is probability of A intersection B divided by probability of B. Let's do it again by the card example. Probability of a heart given that it's a red card is equal to probability of heart intersection red divided by probability of red. So what's probability of red? I pick up a card at random. What is the probability that it's a red card? It is 26 out of 52 equal to half. The upper question is, I pick up a card at random. What is the probability that it's both heart and red? That is 13 out of 52 because there are 13 cards which are heart and all of them are red. So, equal to 1 out of 4. So, what is the probability it's a heart given red? It is 1 out of 4 divided by half or equal to half, which is same as what we figured out by a simple analysis that given that it's a red card, there are 26 of them and 13 of them is hard, so it will be 1 out of 2. So, this is that simple formula. Now, suppose, you know, here are occurrence of a heart and red independent events? No, because heart is a red. If I know that the card in my hand is red, then I can say something, my probability of it being heart changes. If I know that the card in my hand is black, then the probability of its heart it being an heart changes. These are these are not independent events. Okay, but instead, if the question was that I roll a dice and I toss a coin, and I say that in the toss of the coin I have got a head. So what is the probability that when I roll the dice I'll get a five? It doesn't matter, you know, whether head came or tail came. It won't affect what is going to come on the dice. So, probability of A intersection B becomes probability of A times probability of B. And if I put that in this formula and divide it by probability of B, 
then this probability of B, probability of B gets cancelled is equal to probability of A. So, when I have an event probability of A given B and A and B are independent events, that will be same as probability of A. So, here is how we marry both the concept of conditionality and independence together. Okay. So, now let us take this formula two steps further. We are trying to move to the base formula. Okay. So, before we get there, let us write this formula like this probability of A intersection B is probability of B times probability of A in given B. This is nothing but taking the denominator over here and doing cross multiplication and moving it that side. So, that gives us probability of A intersection B is probability of B times probability of A given B. Now, suppose instead if I want to write what is probability of B given A. Probability of B given A by the same formula is probability of B intersection A divided by probability of A. But we know that probability of B intersection A is same as probability of A intersection B which is this. So, I substitute that over here and that gives me probability of B given A is probability of B times probability of A given B divided by probability of A. So, this is what we are moving towards the base formula. Uh, so, I have written this here in terms of F and E the same formula. So, over here probability of F given E is probability of E given F times probability of F divided by probability of E. So, this E and F reverse and whatever is given over here is what it gets multiplied with. Now, there is another rule you know in probability that will help us expand the denominator that is called the law of total probability. Okay. So, what is that? So, when we say probability of occurrence of an event is same as probability of occurrence of that event intersection another event that has occurred plus probability of occurrence of that event intersection another event that is not occurred. I have written C over here which is same as complement it could be written as dash answer. So, let us understand this formula first. This is called the law of total probability. Let us do it in terms of the set diagram. Okay. Suppose this is event E and this is event F. Event E, event F. So, this is my whole universe. So, if someone asks what is probability of E intersection F, that is very simple. That is this event. That both the event has occurred. And then if someone asks what is the probability of E intersection F complement? That would mean F has not occurred, but E has occurred. That would be this event. Okay. In this is the region where F does not occur, but E occurs. So, this is E intersection F dash or F complement or F superscript C and this is E intersection F. Now, what happens if I add these two diagrams together? You know, the shaded regions add up together to give me this region. Now, what is this region? This region is E, the entire E. So, this is what this equation is all about, the law of total probability. So, probability of E is probability of E intersection F plus probability of E intersection F complement. And we already have a formula for this. For any P A intersection B, we can write it as probability A given B times probability of B or probability B given A times probability of A. So, we write probability of E intersection F as probability of E given F times probability of F. Similarly, we write probability of E intersection F complement as probability of E given F complement times probability of F complement. So, combining this equation 1, this equation 2, this equation 3. So, we substitute 2 and 3 in 1 to get this denominator over here as a replacement of probability of E. Okay. So, the numerator remains same when we move from here to here, but the denominator 
gets expanded as explained above. This is called the Bayes theorem. Now, how do we use it? We have a very good question for that. So, this is it. Suppose in any given society, say in, in a particular state, that uh, only, you know, point exactly point, roughly 0.5% point of the population has HIV. So, I pick up a person at random. What is the probability that the person has HIV? That would be 0.5 divided by 100 is equal to 0 0.005. And then a person at random walks into a test clinic and gets tested for HIV. What is known about HIV test is that if a person comes for an HIV test and the person has HIV, then in 98% of the cases, it will detect it. Okay, it, It's 98% effective. But there is something as false negative rate. Okay, That is, the person has HIV, but in, you know, in every two of those 100 individuals, it will say that the person does not have HIV. So, out of every 100 people that come for the test who have HIV, given that they have HIV, in 98 of the cases, the medical test says, yes, they have HIV. And in two of those cases, the medical test says that, no, they do not have HIV. Another thing is, given that the person does not have HIV and walks into the clinic to come for a test, then one out of all those 100 people, for them, the test says that the person is HIV positive, even though the person is not HIV positive. So, let's say a person comes in, tests for an HIV, and the test shows positive. Should the person be worried? Of course, he should be worried. But, you know, how worried should he be? That given the test has been positive, what can we say that the person has HIV or not? What's, what's your guess based on this value? Make a guess, then try to solve this problem, and then we'll discuss, and let's see how close we were to that guess. I hope you have uh, given the problem a try. Now, let us try to solve it together. What does the question say? The question says that an HIV test is 98% effective in detecting HIV. That if someone has really HIV and comes for the test, then in 98 out of the 100 cases, the test would say, yes, the person has HIV. But in 2 of those 100 cases, that is 2% of the cases, even though the person has HIV, the test may not be able to detect it. That is the false negative case. Another thing, there is a false positive thing. A person who does not have HIV and comes for a test, in just one out of the hundred cases, the test would show that the person has HIV. Plus, the last data point is that in any the population that we are talking of, only 0.5 percent of the population or 0.5 divided by 100 probability is of picking a person at random from that society and that person may have HIV. What is E over here? That a person tests positive for HIV and F that the person actually has HIV. And what do we want to calculate? We want to calculate probability F given E. That means someone has gone for a test, the test shows positive, then what is the probability that the person actually has HIV? So, what I need to calculate here using the Bayes theorem, we just reverse this. Okay. What do we know? Do we know PE given F? What does this mean? That the person actually has HIV, that is known, and the test shows positive for it. Do we know this? Yes, we know this. That is this 98%. PE given F is 0.98. So, when I do the formula is, which we have already discussed using Bayes theorem, I just reverse what is here. Whatever is here, I reverse, reverse it. F given E becomes E given F times whatever is there in the given part. So, P of F, this whole divided by, now I repeat whatever I wrote over here, I write it again. P E given F times P of F plus the complement of this lower part, the given part, P E given F complement times P of F complement. Now, let us see whether we know each of them or not. P E given F we know is 0.98. What is P of F? What is F? That a person chosen at random actually has HIV. 
that is what that is this 0.5 percent of the population so 0.005 so if pf is 0.005 what would be pf of complement that will be 1 minus this or 0.995 one last thing that remains is P E given F complement. P E given F complement. What does F complement mean? F means that a person actually has HIV. F complement means that the person does not have HIV. So, and E is that the person actually tests for HIV. So, that is which number? This number. The person does not have HIV, yet the test says that the person has HIV. So, that is P. E given F complement which is 1 upon 100 or 0 0.01. So far so good. Let us put in the values. P E given F is 0 0.98 into P of F is 0 0.005 divided by the same thing plus something more in the denominator and what is that? That is P E given F complement which is 0 0.01 into F complement 0.995. That's it. As simple as that. You know how much this value comes to? Around 33 percent or 0.33 probability over here. So you know, it, at at the onset, it may seem that if the person, the way the problem looks is, you know, if the person shows HIV positive and the test which is 98 percent effective, it's highly likely that the person must have HIV. But as we can see, it's not even 50% of the cases that a cert, such a person would have HIV. So, you know, one cannot say that one need not be worried about, but it's not such a grim scenario, probabilistically speaking. A cat killed. Average is dead.